What a year. A jaw-dropping year for weather. Something remarkable has happened that may etch this year into history for centuries to come. 2012's importance comes not through elections, economic shifts, or the new movements in art. No. 2012 may well be remembered for something far more elemental. This was the year that climate change got it's real for Americans. I don't think that anyone disagrees with the fact that we actually are in the middle of a cold period. 1,000 counties in 26 states have been declared natural disaster areas. An unusually dry summer that very much reflects what the climate models that we use predicted decades ago. What we feared might be true is in fact coming true. 61 percent of the land in the lower 48 states is in drought condition. 112 degrees in Georgia, 113 in South Carolina. In Kansas, it was 118 degrees. We're definitely, in my mind, in a cooling period. Let me ask you the, the, the $6 million question. Is this global warming? What uh, we are seeing right now is weather on steroids, the steroids of climate change. It wasn't just the U.S. There's excess rainfall also in Brazil, which hurt the crop in South America. We're delays now in India's monsoon season. Record rainfall, incredible pictures coming through. Millions of people across China have been affected by widespread flooding. The devastation in southern Russia. A freak superstorm three times larger than Katrina, the biggest storm I've ever seen in 40 years tracking the weather. Problem is there's no consensus on what's causing it. Is it solar flares? Is it the Mars right. wobbles? By the way, I don't think Mars wobbles cause hurricanes. Oh yeah, Sorry, <laughs> somebody I don't. picked up on that. Somebody did pick up on that. I uh, do think the glaciers are melting and that's a big problem. Polar ice sheets in Greenland are melting at five times the pace of just a few years ago. This is hard evidence, and it is from an authoritative source. Yeah. What we're seeing today um, is equivalent or even greater than the temperature records that fell in the 1930s. The study, requested by NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, looked at 50 years of weather data in Texas and concluded that man-made warming had to be a factor in the drought. This is the driest time that we've ever had in our state of Illinois. That the center of continents would dry is one of the very earliest projections that came out of climate models. The hottest weather. We've never had it this hot. And this is this is not anecdotal. This, this is scientific temperature research surveys. We are actually cooling. So far this year, there have been 15,055 record highs, but only 1,343 record lows. That ratio of about 11 to 1 is some of the clearest evidence yet of climate change. So while the origins of droughts are natural, the intensity of them can be increased by human-caused climate change. We have a new normal, really. The background environment for all weather systems has changed. We're really at a whole new state for the Arctic system. What's been going on in the last year in the snow and ice world is really pretty dramatic. The ice melted back to a level that we have not seen in the satellite record at all. In Greenland, we saw this phenomenal summer melt season where melt reached to the very highest part of this two mile thick ice sheet. And even where they had never seen melt before, there were areas that melted for the first time. That was in the summer of 2012. Very warm year, very high melt. Ice sheets are melting. Greenland is melting more every year, and there's also an accelerating trend in Antarctica. We will probably find that 2012 is an extraordinary year. Indications are that things are changing in the Arctic much faster than any of our models would have initially led us to believe. The permafrost seems to be decaying, and there is the threat that at some point in the not too distant future, a very large amount of the carbon that is stored in the permafrost and frozen soils could be released into carbon cycling. In December of 2012, polling data showed that Americans who have not trusted scientists on the issue of climate change are now beginning to believe the evidence of their own eyes. Magnolia trees in full bloom in St. Paul on March the 27th. The same poll showed that 80% of Americans now believe climate change will be a serious problem if we do nothing to stop it. With the warming atmosphere, more fuel 
for extreme rainfall events. The storms that are driven by latent heat, and that includes hurricanes, thunderstorms, tornadoes, you have more fuel for those. So the strongest ones are going to be stronger. A one in 500 year flood for the north woods of Minnesota, Duluth. This doesn't happen here, you know. A couple of days later, a record derecho, a boomerang shaped swirl of severe thunderstorms racing across the Ohio Valley into Washington, D.C., plunging millions of people into darkness, the biggest we've ever seen. The poll also showed that a solid majority of Americans, 57 percent, believe the government can and should do a great deal to mitigate climate change. The climate system is changing right before our very eyes. I mean, this is something that anybody can see. You don't have to be a scientist. If we continue down this path, if we continue on this course that we're on, we're going to have more strong storms. That's, that's clear. This is just the beginning, this kind of summer weather we're having. This is a big problem. This is a real problem. It's happening now. It's not happening generations from now. Um, and this is uh, literally uh, just a taste of the sorts of summers that will be commonplace uh, just decades from now. We're looking at what has been a very rare event for our common experience uh, becoming a, a common event uh, in the relatively near term future. Oh, oh, oh.